Well, today on Nation a Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about getting customers, and this is the third part. It's all about commercial. So if you're in window cleaning or any type of service business, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck, and hopefully it's something that you want to watch more of or listen more of. It's anywhere podcasts are, so go back, listen. Uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, Podbean, plus it's also on YouTube if you want to play it in the background. Uh, If you are an OG, if you are one of the epic, the cool kids, that means you've watched every episode, but more importantly, you've put your orders in through me. Huh? Shameless plug. Well, thank you. I really just want to jump off and say I really am genuinely appreciative that you guys let me put all of your orders in. Uh, Big or small, it doesn't matter. It's what I do. It's how I survive and how I live on this planet. So thank you so very much to all of you who do that. And if you want to be one of the cool kids, which I know you want to be one of the cool kids, uh, go ahead and give me a call or even better, shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. Let me know when everything's in your cart or what you want to get ordered. And I would love to put that in literally I would love it you would be doing me a favor but it costs you nothing extra and uh, I make it as easy as possible plus let me know and I'll send you a cool kid sticker because now you're an official cool kid speaking of stickers if you haven't noticed American Window Cleaner magazine is absolutely amazing if you haven't gotten it yet all the cool window cleaning stickers come from that magazine by the way here is uh Uh, sneak preview of the sticker sheets that are coming out so anyway if you want cool stickers and if you want to get your monthly subscription sent to your door because you're nerding out right now you're watching a window cleaning podcast so of course you want to get this stuff go to awcmag.com and get yourself a subscription and I see everybody's subscription so everybody who puts a subscription in and I see it come through, it's like awesome. I smile because of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Shameless plugs are done. Go do all of that. Uh, But we are in the third and final chapter of the getting customers. We've done residential, we've done route. Now we're doing commercial. Now, if you don't know, there's a difference between route and commercial. If you're Steve-O and you say it wrong, it's route. But uh, commercial is anything that is not done, <clears throat> excuse me, once a month, once every two weeks, or weekly, right? So we're talking quarterly, every six months, or worst case scenario, once a year. That's commercial. Commercial is something you cannot build a route around, but usually they're larger projects. You're not having like office buildings usually done monthly, which would be amazing if you have it. By the way, if you have something amazing like that, your highest frequency, biggest contact, put it in the uh, comments on YouTube so I can see. But usually it's office buildings, it's uh, mid-rises, things like that. Uh, If you are doing high-rise, any type of high-rise work, that's also uh, considered commercial. But like anything, it's its own beast. You cannot do sales to it like you would with uh, residential or uh, route, right? You can't send EDDM to route and you can't send it to commercial properties, right? They don't even usually have a general mailbox for the building. You'd have to contact the property management company and they get just spammed with everything. But there's a few ways that you can still advertise, land some awesome accounts and uh, and get some uh, commercial account. Now, let me tell you this. Commercial work in general is amazing to me. I told you the benefits of residential and route in the last two. If you haven't checked them out, go back and watch. But the best part of commercial is you can take that and fill your spaces. I'll let you know later on how to do that. But when you have commercial, it is on you to schedule. Now you have something to fill your pre-spring, pre-fall, but usually you also are going to get multiple buildings and they're always nice tickets 
I love commercial buildings. Usually there's no screens on them. They're super easy. If you're into water fed, which I hope you are. If you're not, call me. We'll get you set up with some water fed. Uh, but absolutely easy. Great projects. It's like a day. You'll send a whole crew or a couple crews to a building for a day. It's the whole day's knocked out. Great profits on them. And uh, they just want the things done, right? But how do you find commercial properties, right? So let's dive in. The first and foremost, um, commercial itself is usually always dealt with from a property manager, right? So let's think about this. In a house, obviously you don't need that. Some people do on the bigger ones or ones that they're out of town. Route, they're small, so they do everything, right? But in commercial buildings, there's usually tenants in there. If it's a commercial building, maybe there's only one tenant. That's the whole company. But a lot of times, 99.99% of the time, the company that sits in the offices that are there don't actually own the building. They kind of lease the building. The building owner gives it to a property management company usually, or they have an on-site, and they're the ones that take care of it, right? You have to think though, they do everything. They change the light bulbs. They, you know, uh, something breaks, they fix it. They do the maintenance. They schedule the lawn care, the snow removal if you're in the area. They do the billing facade, the roofs, the the um, uh, uh, grease, if there's restaurants in there, drive throughs right? They do everything. Window cleaning is just a little itty bitty part of it. Remember, we've talked about this. No one cares about window cleaning like we do. So a lot of times people go, oh man, they're gonna love to see me. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there and they'll be like, oh yeah, window clean. They don't care. You're just one itty bitty smear on the amount of things that they do, right? And because it's so infrequent, it's not even on their brain like lawn care is, right? So we have to know that, we have to break through the noise, but if we find them, we can target them. And you know in your area, there are a ton of buildings all over, but you don't know really how to find them. And I'm gonna give you a couple quick tips on that. First off, if you go into a building and in the very front entrance, there's a little uh, either cork board or some type of pamphlet thing, usually there's something on the entrance of the building that talks about the building, where the people are, you know, what floor is who, blah, 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 blah. But on that board, there will also say, this building managed by fill in the blank. And you can find that. If for some weird reason, and I don't know that I've ever even seen it, but either way, if it's some weird reason and you can't find that anywhere, you can go into one of the tenants and just say, hey, I'm sorry to bug you. You know, there's always a front desk person. I just need to know the property management company for this entire building. Um, I'll be out of your hair, right? They'll be able to get you that information because they have it, they know it. I've never had a situation where they haven't been able to give it to me. They go, I can't tell you that, right? Because they don't know really why you're there. It could be for any reason. And they're just going to pass that information along. But once you find who manages the company, that's who you're talking to. And I've dealt with on-site management, right? They're like, oh, they're in office seven on the third floor. You go in there and you can meet with them and they're on-site property management. It's a little bit more rare to have that, but usually it's a property management company. Now, the property management companies are absolutely amazing, right? When you get into one, A, because a property manager, right? So if you're dealing with Shelly Smith, she's gonna be the property manager for probably you know five buildings, depending on the size and the scope. She's gonna be the property management manager on a bunch of buildings. So if you can find Shelly, you have an in on five buildings. Now, when Shelly likes you and they do their morning meeting there at the property management company and the other 30 uh, reps that do five buildings a piece all talk about window cleaning, they then find out about how awesome you are. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting more work. So it's just a sea of opportunity to get into commercial. Really, really is a benefit to find them and to impress them, right? Once you find the person, you eliminate having to have the uh, gatekeeper stop you. You have um, your information is not getting thrown away. You're able to then impress them and break through the noise, right? But how do you impress a property manager? 
Property managers, because they're an easy score, right? So in route, it's like that. You go into a route place, they have a bucket bob stopping in every other day, trying to wash windows for beer money. We know that. So we need to break through the noise there and show ourselves as professional. In commercial, we need to show ourselves as professional, but professional on a large scale that can do buildings like that, right? So you will never, not ever, go into a commercial property and write out a handwritten bid. Not ever. If you do, you're not getting the job. They're going to look at that and go, wow, this guy is going to just not be reliable. That's all they care about. Obviously, they want to stay within budget or somewhere close, but they also are not going to deal with somebody who's just going to screw it up. They have enough things to worry about on top of worrying about you not being a legit company. So we need to impress them. I'm going to tell you a couple really cool ways to impress one. The first one is going to be when you go in just to introduce yourself, you're going to maybe make them, get them a, uh, a tray of cookies, right? You can do that and then insert your logo as the bottom of the tray. You can put a big sticker of your company on the top of the tray of cookies. Every office everywhere loves food. If you haven't noticed that, they're like piranhas in an office. You want to impress somebody? Bring food to a nurse's station and you would just, everybody will love you and they will just, it literally swarms. It's, it's a crazy. Same thing with property management companies. Put your logo on some treats and drop it off, right? Maybe drop it off with a really high gloss, really nice brochure on just who you are. Tape it to the container. So that when they go and go, oh man, who brought cookies? Oh, XYZ window cleaning, cool. I actually had a project and they were gonna look through it. Break through the noise, right? Impress them in getting in in the first place, right? One of the big things that we do is we do our bids as bid packets, commercial folder. I've talked about this a bunch of times, but I'm gonna go a little bit more into depth from this. Now, when I sell a commercial property, I am giving them a folder that is fully printed all about us. I have inside of that folder, I have my business card set up. I have stagger cut, high gloss, flyers in there also when they open it up you see each service the next sheet is cut a little shorter and you see that service at the top another one is shorter and that service at the top i have everything from pressure washing window cleaning any other service that i offer that a commercial property only would like every picture in there is commercial pictures they're not residential I'm not doing route i'm not blah 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 right i may have an about us page in there but I'm going to have everything super high gloss, super awesome. In there, I'm also going to have a sheet on all of the accreditations that I have. All of those accreditations are in there, right? So if I'm any part of any group, if I'm uh, part of the Better Business Bureau, if I'm in any b and group, everything I have, all the logos out there. We take our industry seriously. Here's what we do. Remember, the whole thing on commercials, we're impressing them. We're stepping in above and beyond because the main thing that they want is to have this off their plate. They have so many hats. They do so many things that they just need to have one less thing to do. That's where you come into play, right? I also have with services that I offer all in there, just brochures explaining it. I have a printed proposal pricing all on nice linen paper right i have all of that in there with my insurance documents and anything else that i think they need to have and know when you give them this each one costs around ten dollars that's how much it costs me to print all that stuff right you're printing a thousand of one sheet a thousand of another sheet a thousand of another sheet thousand right doing all that breaking it down now i could do a thousand folders People say, man, $10, you're spending $10 for everyone? Let's look at it. Step back. If you do Angie's List, uh, if you do uh, Home Advisor, Yelp, Thumbtack, all of those, you're paying 
20 to $40 a lead. I am more than happy spending that on a commercial one. Because instead of getting one house, who I'm fighting against everybody, I'm going to break the noise. A $20 tray of cookies, $30 tray of cookies, no problem. That paired with a $10 um, pamphlet or a proposal packet when I give it to them anyway, that's $40. It's $40 for a comma, right? For, for thousands of dollars worth of work. I'm absolutely okay with that because guess what? Just like everything else, we are always selling against the lowballer, selling against the other guy who's not professional, selling against the guy who just isn't impressing anyone, right? So I always, always, always want to impress them. And $40 is nothing when you're talking about these accounts because a lot of times you're getting long-term contracts or at least agreements, right? So my proposal packet will absolutely blow them away. Folders, staggered cut, insurance, accreditation, business card, all of that. I put in everything that they could possibly want, right? I've even gone as far as uh, putting them as a listed uh, insured and stuff that right in there. Depending on your insurance company, if you've ever gone there and said, hey, uh, you know, XYZ building maintenance needs to be uh, listed insured for this project. Usually they'll charge you something for it, but there's sometimes, depending on how they word it, that they don't, right? Put that in there. Put in there something specific on their building. Put in there pictures of their building, right? A big sheet, a picture of their building. You go ahead and, and design all the services with some arrows and things like that just to kind of give an, over, an overall scope. Something to impress them. They will never get a folder that blows them away and they will never throw that away because guess what? On the pile of all the people who have submitted bids, there's going to be, oh, that one's a, a nice single sheet. Oh, that one's a trifold brochure. Oh, that one's written on a carbon copy form. And then there's yours. High gloss, sexy, great colors. It's blowing them away. Right? Remember, we're going to tell them our value before we even ever talk price. If you own a, a, a big building and your entire job is to make this building look amazing and to keep the tenants happy, that's your job. Who are you going to hire? The company that gives you a half sheet of paper is scribbled on the back of a napkin price? $1,000. Or the company that you're like, holy cow, this, this guy, these guys are like ultra professional. Holy, I mean... Window cleaning instantly is like glorified janitors. If you break that mold, you become a giant company. That's why follow-up is so important on a lot of this. Same thing with commercial. Follow-up is huge. I don't want to... People are like, well, I don't want to bug them. I don't want to bug them either. But I am sure going to stay relevant. I'm going to keep my name there. I'm going to hand in those proposals. Two days later, I'm going to call and say, hey... Uh, Shelly, this is uh, Jersey from XYZ Window Cleaning. I just wanted to give you a call, follow up. I want to make sure you got all that brochure and see if you had any questions on anything on the packet, on the commercial bid packet, whatever you're calling it. Oh, yeah, we got it here. No, we're still in the process. You know, it's going to take a little. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just want to make sure I'm going to stay there. Uh, make sure you got everything you need. And if you need anything else, this here is my cell phone. Call me anytime. Text me, whatever you need. Uh, and I'll check back in with you in a week or so, and we'll go from there. And I'll just keep up there, and uh, we'll go. If you hear anything before me, let me know. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Guess who's going to call back a week later? I absolutely am. Do you know how many things they do? In those two days, in those seven days, they've talked to hundreds of people. They've done dozens of services. They've had problems and issues and good things. They've done other buildings in this buildings and this things. They forgot about you 100% guarantee it. I call seven days later and just say, hey, it's Jersey with XYZ Window Clean. I just wanted to check in on that bid. Uh, just wanted to see if you got everything and if you had all the information. People always tell me, they're like, you're going to say the exact same thing? Aren't they going to just like, oh, you sound like a rope? No one remembers what they said. 
If it's not in text form, and we talked on the phone, me and you, you probably called me and put an order or something, we shot the poo or talked or whatever. What did I tell you? What did I say? You don't really remember, right? Of course not. And I say some pretty profound things. <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. But you're not going to remember. So I'm not annoying them because in your brain, oh man, I just called them seven days ago. You're thinking of just them. You call and they're just thinking of everybody they've talked to in the past seven days. It's not annoying them. You're staying relevant. No, no, you know, I think we got everything. Everything looks really good. You know, hey, uh, thanks for the cookies, by the way. And, you know, uh, hey, absolutely. You know, we just want you guys to uh, know who we are and remember. And if there's ever a time we can help you out, we want to make sure that uh, we at least get a, a chance to bid on it. You know, but, oh, yeah, absolutely. After those, you know, that's a ha, 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 ha. I'm relevant. I'm relevant. The others are not. Now, when they go in those packets and look back at it, because again, you're just an afterthought. There's a lot of other things going on. Now they look at all those things, the napkin, you know, the single sheet, and they see that folder. Oh, these are the guys that sent the cookies. Man, damn. They're not even looking at the other guys. You're the one that keeps calling. Oh, yeah, this guy oh, is so nice on the phone. They're the ones that uh, sent those cookies, kind of introduced themselves. I remember that. These are the guys that sent this proposal. And these guys are just on top of it. This is a company like we've never dealt with before. If you have all those lined up, who's hiring the guy on the napkin? Who's hiring the guy on the napkin? Even if you're in the ballpark, you're not the cheapest. Even if you're in the ballpark, they're hiring you. Right? Stay relevant. Make them know you. When you send that proposal packet in, make it impressive. Send in cookies, brownies, food, snacks, whatever. No, you're not bribing them. But guess what? You're going to remember who I am. For sure, right? And the biggest thing they're looking for as a property management company, who they're looking for, Remember, clean glass is universal. They assume that if I hire a window cleaner, every job will look the exact same. They're going to be clean. Clean is universal. There is no such thing as more clean or not or less clean. There's either clean or not clean, right? A, they don't care that much about it. They don't care anywhere close to how much you care about it. They just want to clean. But that's off the table. They're hiring a company that makes it easy for them and that they can rely on. Because again, remember who you're selling to. If someone speaks Spanish to you, you have to speak Spanish back in order for them to understand. In a commercial setting, they just need it to be done and have one less headache. I want to let them know, hey, if there's ever a problem, shoot me a text, call me, you get egged, I'm there. You don't ever have to worry about it. I take care of everything. It's one less thing you have to worry about. They've already seen your proposal packet. They know you're a legit company. They've already seen the quality you take in your company. They've already seen the uh, professionalism. They're not going to have to worry about that. They've seen what you put into this. They're not going to worry about that, right? You have to make it easy for them, though. I have commercial pride. This is the worst story I've ever had, ever, in my entire life. And if you're eating right now listening to this, I won't get too into it, but stop eating. This is a real story. One of my property managers, two, two, two stories with this guy, by the way. It's awesome. I've told it before, but first time I ever walked in there, it was through somebody. Somebody was my first commercial project. I walked in. I did everything. I did the bid, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't know how to bid these things. It was like forever ago. I walked in and gave him the bid, and he goes, oof. I'm in Wisconsin, so that's like a saying, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I messed up. I'm like, I'm too high or something. He goes, man, he goes, listen, I really want to give you uh, uh, a chance here, but this this, this price is, is bad. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you know, if we uh, adjust it, we can. And he goes, definitely. He's, uh, double the price, resubmit it, and uh, we'll get you the job. And I said, uh, cut it in half? He said, no, no, double it. He goes, you're not even anywhere close to, like, market on this. Like, double the price. You're way too low. It's, oh, man. Anyway, got a bunch of buildings from the guy. Guy's great. Had him for literally years. He probably, I had him probably for 15 of the years. 
Great guy. And I got so much work from him. I ended up getting commercial janitorial. I got multiple buildings. I got pressure washing, window cleaning. I got, hey, while you're up there jobs. Like, I got everything. But I also got a phone call on the 4th of July one time. He actually texted me. He goes, hey, man. It's his name. He's give me a call. We got an emergency. It's like, oh, crap. Okay, well, maybe he got egged or something. We'll get out there. He calls and he goes, hey, man. It's the 4th of July. I know that you answer all the time. I know you're on this, and I hate to even ask it. You can charge me literally whatever you want. But the parade was going by in front of the building, and somehow somebody got into the front entrance of the building, but the building itself was locked. They were looking for a bathroom. They didn't find one. So they did their business in the staircase. Yes. And he goes, I can't get anybody else there. You got to get out there. I'm not even in the same state right now. Like, is there anything you can do? I said, absolutely. I'll be there within an hour. Loaded up with the hazmat, stopped at the lows on the way there to get some worse stuff. This is going to suck. And it sucked. It was, it was such a bad, it was such a bad half hour of like, it was, it was bad. I won't even get into it, but it was really, really bad. It was so bad, in fact, that the stains from that incident were there for the rest of the time I've ever cleaned. I could not get it out of the rubber floor. Anyway, that secured it. That secured it. That guy knew that he could call me and I could take care of his headache. 100%. It was an awful thing, and I know. I charged, you, I charged him more money than I've ever made for an hour's worth of work ever because it was awful and you know what he was absolutely amazing i called him told him i said hey man just so you know it's coming off this really sucked had to buy some extra stuff because dude i don't care about it he said send it to my email and head over to the building i'll cut you a check right now sure enough he shut up shook my hands like man dude you got me out of a bind i can't believe it you know blah 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 it's not even a service I offered, but I was the one he called. I was the one who did that. That's what they're looking for. From that same account, I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars from that one guy. Not only his buildings, but everybody's buildings. He got me into property management companies he wasn't even a part of because a bunch of property managers would all go to breakfast. And he's telling people like, dude, you gotta, this guy is like amazing. You gotta, get, you gotta hire this guy, it's so great. Not only that, but he didn't screw me in the first place and doubled my price. These are property managers that you really, really want. Make it easy for them, take away their pain. But guess what? When you finally get that job, you get to put that job in where you want it. And the best place that you can put commercial is pre-spring and pre-fall. So the time that you're the slowest before the busy, right? So we do all of our big buildings before our spring rush and before our fall rush. Every single time. It's absolutely amazing because you can put them in when you want. And if they want it done every six months, you can put it in where in that six months that you want. It's a great chunk of change. Throw your way. It is awesome to have the companies, the buildings, and the property managers are great, and they will be loyal to you as long as you take care of them. Fill your space with them. It's the best thing you could possibly be. I love it. Again, you're taking residential in the busy times, route for regular frequency, and the commercial fills those times. Those are big tickets. I think every commercial property that I've ever done has been a comma at least, you know, over a thousand dollars, call them a comma. I can't, I can't remember one that was even under that, right? So it's awesome. Water fed, send the crews out. They're just doing commercial for a week or two before filling that space. All of a sudden spring comes a little early. We move them back. There's no dedicated time. If there's tenants, you have to let them know, but it's not a big deal depending on size and time. But a big thing that people forget, the number one thing that you can do to ruin these is as soon as you get them, you go, Google, done, I'm on to the next one. Deuces. You stop being relevant. When things are going smoothly, that is the worst thing because then you become forgettable. It just happens and it just becomes second nature. They're like, it's going to get done. So what you continue to do is be relevant. I've done jobs on anniversaries where, again, I've sent cookie trays, brownies, cookies, edible arrangements. I've sent everything. 
with a letter. And I've sent giant edible arrangements. They're like $300 edible arrangements to the office. And the card is addressed to that property manager. By the way, usually, say what you will, but when I send it to an office, Sweets and cookies do better kind of on the other thing. If I have a uh, woman kind of property manager, I always send like edible arrangements and cookies and things. But I usually don't send both to both, if that makes sense. Find what they like. Obviously, they're giving it to everybody, but it'd be weird if you sent like flowers to a dude, right? Maybe not. I don't know. But sending this giant thing, they're going to share it with everybody. And I'm getting my logo and stickers all on the container, right? I'm putting the card in there and I'm going to say, happy one year anniversary, Shelly. And I'll write LOL. And I'll write, you know, XYZ window cleaning. And they'll get it and they're like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. Like we started this, you know, this guy started cleaning with us uh, a year ago and he just sent this as like an anniversary present, right? It becomes something that's fun. It becomes something the rest of the offices and the other offices, man, is this guy's taking it seriously. They love, they're like eager to please. Now all of a sudden you reintroduce yourself to the entire office again. Once a year, I'll go to them and we always do kind of the work recap things. Hey, I just want to see how things are going. Uh, I got some stuff. I'll stop in usually and I'll say, hey man, I have a bunch of business cards, flyers, you know, whatever. I, can I leave these here? Could you mind throwing them out just for some of the other property managers kind of want to see if anybody else has got any? Like, they're absolutely happy because they built this relationship with you. So be relevant. Don't lose them. More importantly, have fun with it. Bigger contracts are harder to get, but the chase is worth it. If you're talking about the largest accounts that you can get are always commercial. So that's it. Get some commercials. Get some route. Get some residential. Fill your entire time. And uh, yeah, you're going to be absolutely better for it. But again, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. If you liked this episode, if you thought maybe I got something out of it, maybe I want to help this guy out, let me put your order in. You're already ordering supplies anyway. Windowcleaner.com is the best place in the world for window cleaning supplies. I will stand by that. And I happen to be the best rep in all of window cleaning. Maybe partial on that one, but I want to be your rep. So let me put your orders in, 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Call me, text me, make it happen. I want to make it easy for you. Let me know. I'll give you a cool kid sticker too. And again, I know some of you still don't have this, but get the American Window Cleaner Magazine. By the way, sneak peek, this is the newest issue that just, it's hot off the presses. By the way, Frank Rave. But this Magazine is amazing. Comes to your door every single month. Plus, you get a sticker sheet. You can have the most awesome gear in all the world with all your super cool stickers. If you want to buy stickers, we have sticker sheets for sale also. AWCMAG.com. Go there, buy it, get a subscription. Be amazing, but more importantly, be epic.